Today we are doing chapter two, section four in algebra one, and our essential question is, how can you solve a multi-step inequality? Now, well, the answer to that is pretty much how you solve an equation, but the difference is, instead of an equation, we've got an inequality. So we're going to be tying together some previous knowledge from the last two sections. So we want to solve each inequality, and we're going to graph our solution. So we start by writing down the original problem. Well, we want to get rid of that plus 7. So I ask myself, hey, how am I going to get rid of that plus 7? I'm going to subtract 7 is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be left with y over negative 6 is less than 2. Then I said, well, how am I going to get rid of that minus 6? Well, it's a division, and the opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 6. And then I realized, hey, I am multiplying by a negative. I'm going to have to flip the direction of that inequality. So that less than becomes a greater than. If I'm going to make a mistake, that's where I'm going to make my mistake. Be careful of that. And I'm going to get y is greater than negative 12. I'm going to have an open dot at negative 12 shaded to the right. Um, for part B, I have a minus 4. To get rid of that, you add 4. Now I have 2 times B. To get rid of that 2 times, I'm going to divide by 2. I don't have to flip the direction since it's a positive 2 that I'm dividing by. I'm going to have a closed dot at 6 shaded to the right. All right, and as always, if this is going fast, you can always pause. And right now, I would suggest you pause, try these four questions on your own, and then hit the pause buzz button to check your answers. On the number one, you would add one, divide by four. Number two, you would subtract eight, divide by negative nine. Remember to flip that direction of that inequality. Number three, you're going to subtract 11, multiply by negative 2. Again, it's going to have to be flipped, that direction of the inequality sign. And number four, subtract 5, multiply by negative 3. Flip the direction of the inequality because you're multiplying by a negative. All right, on this one, we have variables on both sides of that inequality. Well, just like an equation, I need to get them on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Oh, take that back. I'm going to add 5 first. And I get 6x is less than 2x plus 16. Now I'm going to subtract 2x. 4x is less than 16. Well, we need to get rid of that 4. Let's divide both sides by 4. x is less than 4. So that's our solution. And it didn't say to graph, so we're not going to graph that one. All right, we have two problems here. Let's go ahead and look at that first one. 8b minus 3 is greater than 4 times the quantity 2b plus 3. But well, whenever I see parentheses, I'm automatically going to start thinking distributive property. Well, now I've got variables on both sides. Let's subtract 8b from each side of the inequality. And I get negative 3 is greater than 12. Oh gosh, that's not true. All of our variables canceled out and we're left with a false statement. So there is no solution. Um, on part B, I see parentheses again, so the first thing I need to do is use that distributive property. I'm going to subtract 10w from both sides, and I'm starting to think, uh-oh, is it like the previous one? All my variables cancel out, and I get negative 2 is less than or equal to 7. Well, in this case, that's a true statement. Negative 2 is less than negative 7. So this one is 
all solutions. So what you need to get out of this is if your variables cancel out and you're left with a false statement, it is no solution. If your variables cancel out and you're left with a true statement, it is all real numbers. All right, if you hear a dog in the background drinking water or barking or crying, try and ignore that. All right, here are four problems for you to try on your own. I suggest you hit pause and then check your answers. First one, subtract 2x or subtract 3x, add 12, divide by 2. On number 6, your k's cancel out, but you're left with a true statement, so it's all real numbers. On number 7, your n's cancel out, but you're left with a false statement, so it's no solution. Let's try a word problem. You need a mean score, and remember mean means average, of at least 90 to advance to the next round of a touchscreen trivia game. What score is in the fifth game will allow you to advance? Okay, so what we know are the first four games. We don't know the fifth game. We know we're looking for a mean or an average. So I need to make a plan, and I'm going to use the definition of average is the sum of all numbers divided by the number there is. And it has to be at least 90. So it can go over 90, and it can include 90. X is going to be the number of points scored in the fifth game. So first game plus second game plus third game plus fourth game plus fifth game divided by 5, the number of games has to be greater than or equal to 90. Combine your like terms, multiply by 5, subtract 352, and I need to score greater than 98. If I score 98, I can go to the next round. They got fancy here and they made a little graph. Looks like game three is what really threw us off here. All right, what if you needed a mean score of 85? Why don't you take a second, hit pause, try that one on your own. You'd have to have a score of at least 73. That seems a little bit more doable. All right. Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you are still confused, come into Math Lab or iPass.